Hi, this is Graham from Genoms Astro. In this video, I'm going to review the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope by Dwarf Lab. Now, Dwarf Lab have sent me this unit to review, but I want to make it clear that this is not a paid promotion. I'm free to say the things that I like about the scope and things that maybe I don't like as much. In this video, we're going to see what's inside the box. This is the deluxe package, which comes with a few more goodies that cost a few more pounds than the classic package. Then we'll see how you basically use one of these smart telescopes uh, in conjunction with an app that you put on your phone. And then finally, we'll actually see how it performs. So we're going to look at some daytime objects. Then we're going to look at some solar system targets. And then finally, do a bit of deep sky astro. And at the end of all that, uh, I'll wrap up and see whether I think it's good value for money or not. Um, if you haven't subscribed to Genems Astro and you think that might be useful, then please click the subscribe button now and let's get started. Okay, so what's inside the deluxe package? Inside the box comes the carry case. So it's the kind of case you get with a digital SLR. It's got a handle, it's got a strap, and it's got some nice dwarf lab uh, detailing on the side here. Opening it up, you get to the main telescope body. Here it is. The unit uh, is able to move in this sense and like this. So it's an altazimuth type of telescope. Um, the optics are visible on the front here. There are two lenses inside. There is a telephoto lens and a wide angle lens. And when you take into account all the the clever optical zooms and, and stuff. Basically, this one operates at 675 millimeter focal length. So kind of like a, a smallish refractor perhaps. And this one operates like a normal lens on a digital SLR. If you look around the back of the unit, you can see that there is a slot to put an SD card in. And that is in fact inside the box as well. Micro SD card. And then here, is a cover where the battery uh, lives and you can open it up and you can pull the battery in and out using this little uh, little grab on here so put that back on okay so that is the main telescope unit itself it has got a type c charging port here although note the cable itself does not come with a camera, so you're going to need one of these. This is a USB Type-C. It has an on-off button on the top. And in terms of controls, that's about it. When you turn it on, it has some lights up here which tell you the charging status and a kind of rotary sort of spinning green or red light on the top which tells you something I haven't quite worked out, but it tells you something. Certainly that the unit is on. Okay, what else? We have a mini tripod, like so. This screws with a standard tripod thread into the bottom of the telescope itself. And tighten it up, there you go. So basically what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be placing the unit outside, leveling it using the the tripod and then setting up, pointing at the target that you're, you're interested in photographing. So that's what you get with the, that's what we've seen so far comes with the, the basic package. If you buy the deluxe package, you get a couple of extra things as well. You get a second battery, which I say is quite useful. Uh, if you're using it outside, I'd say the battery for me has lasted maybe uh, two, two and a half hours. Uh, so it's quite happy, quite useful to have a spare like this. You charge it inside the unit and it takes about an hour or so to charge. So having uh, the, the spare battery that you get with the deluxe package, I say, is quite a useful feature if you're gonna, gonna be looking at multiple targets and you think you're gonna be taking lots of shots. You also get with the deluxe package, this sort of filter assembly. So this is a filter adapter that basically just magnetically sticks onto the front of the unit, in front of where the, the two lenses are, and you get some lens, uh, some filter options. So you basically have two neutral density filters, which are used if you're taking images of the sun, and then you have a basically 
a light pollution filter of sorts here as well, which you can put over the, the particular lens that you're using. Uh, what I say about these is that the one thing that perhaps concerns me a little bit is that the, the two dark filters, they obviously you should never attach anything like this to an eyepiece of a conventional telescope and look through it because that those sorts of filters are not, not a safe way to look at the sun. But you can use them as we'll see to attach in front of the of the lenses of the smart telescope, this the dwarf two, and image the sun. But just a little bit of note of caution, don't use these uh, dark filters in conjunction with a normal telescope. Uh, so that's about it. I think that is what you get inside the box. It is a nice unit and the fact that you can put it in the bag like this, really nothing else. I think it's straight away it tells you that this is a very portable unit and as we'll see the idea is that you can be imaging quickly with it once you've figured out how the process works of, uh, of using it with an app. So you control the telescope using an app, as I mentioned before, and you basically download an app called the Dwarf Lab app from your app store. Uh, this is what it looks like when you first uh, enter the app. You've got options here to access tutorial videos from the Dwarf Lab website, and then you have what they call an album, which is where the unit allows you to see the various pictures that you've taken in different folders uh, using the, the smart telescope. And then at the top here, you've got some settings, basically the normal kind of setup you get of the camera and language, etc., etc. The first thing you need to do then is connect your phone to the unit. So if I turn on the uh, smart telescope itself, so I've pressed that button on the top of the scope that I showed you before, and then I click connection button, and you'll see that the app is looking for basically looking for Wi-Fi and a Bluetooth connection, I believe to um, between your uh, your phone and the camera and then you see you get options like this sometimes you get one sometimes you get two and I just select one of those it asks me if I want to join a Wi-Fi network I say yes please it takes a few seconds actually this process is one of the slower parts of, of using the uh, the smart telescope and certainly something I do whilst I'm uh, on my way outside if I'm going to use it um, at night time. And then you come onto the main uh, operating screen. So what you can see here is essentially a view through the two cameras. I'm just looking out the back window of my house. So over here on the top left, you can see the uh, wide angle camera and the rest of the screen is showing you, me the, the, the result of the telephoto lens. And if I click on the top, on the, on, the, on the windows, they basically, you can toggle between which one is shown big and which is small. Hopefully you can see down on the uh, right hand side of the screen, you've got various modes. So burst mode, time lapse, won't worry about those. Photo and video, this is what you might expect really, sort of daytime photo and video options. You've got a panoramic photo option and then you've got a couple of options that are linked to Astro. So basically you've got one here where you can take dark frames and one where you actually take uh, Astro images and you kind of slide it up and down to select the function that you want. Now I've taken a view here on this video of not reading the instructions. That was my initial view. I just unpacked the unit. Pretty simple. Everything goes together nicely. And then I thought, well, you know, I'll see if I can get it to work without reading any of the instructions. And what I would say is that it is actually, in the case here, it is worth going to some of those tutorials, get a bit of an idea from the Dwarf Lab videos, because like a lot of things, when you know how to use the app, it's simple, but I found it quite tricky to work out the order of the sequence that you need to do when you're, uh, when you're using a telescope uh, without reading any instructions. So. My normal process of just trying to figure it out kind of failed and I would recommend you save time by uh, by looking at some of the, the tutorial videos. But basically what we can see here is um, the two camera views and over here you've got a, over on the bottom left you've got a little uh, a little joystick which you can use and this is actually moving the unit around uh, following the input on the joystick. And at any point you can see that the little 
yellow triangle, the little <laughs> triangle, the little yellow rectangle up in this box here is basically showing you what is in the field of view of the, the, the telephoto. You can adjust the sensitivity of that uh, joystick using this slider here. I would say I find this joystick, again, a bit fiddly to use. I'm often zooming off into a direction I wasn't intended to go, but I think that's probably just uh, user error. So those are the basic functions. You come in and out, you can turn this window on and off. There's an option here where you set up all the parameters of the two cameras. So there's a telephoto tab where you set up the exposure, the gain, the white balance, and whether you're passing or cutting the infrared uh, through the lens. And then another tab here, which you do, uh, you set up similar options for the wide angle lens. And then to make that menu go away, you uh, just click the option. So you could get rid of, get rid of these things, bring them up. So that's quite easy. And then uh, you've got, basically you're deciding whether you're gonna take pictures during the day, in which case we're in uh, photo mode or video mode. And, uh, or if you're gonna use, uh, do astro photos. So if we stick with the daytime photos for now, you can see down here, there's a focus button underneath the exposure, the shutter button, and you can click on that. And you've got an option now to, uh, if we just bring back the other view a minute, you've got an option to focus the camera. So there's an auto option here, which is, let's press it and see. Camera basically hunts around a bit to find what it considers to be the best focus. You can hear it going duh, 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 when it's doing that. A little bit hit or miss. Perhaps if I point at a, an object that's not moving around, if I look at a fence panel here and I press it again, auto, it gets close, not quite. And then it's generally my experience that the, the autofocus doesn't work that well. But never mind, because you have the option to just press the plus and the minus and figure out how to get a more precise focus by pushing that a few times. I'm doing the minus here and yeah, it comes into a nice focus. So you kind of need to focus the scope, the, <laughs> the telescope first once you're outside, whether you're taking a picture during the day or whether you're gonna be setting up for taking night shots. And that's really the first step. And at nighttime you do it with a bright object like a, like a bright star or maybe a planet and you, you zoom the, uh, the, the gain up to make it nice and easy to find. You focus it and then it remembers the focus. That's the great thing about it. Um, after that, essentially you go off into the, the two modes. So if we wanted to take a picture of that fence, all I need to do now is just press uh, the shutter button and it says shoot success. And then I could go to this button under the focus little picture here and it will show me, I can select from the album what the picture is that I've just taken. And then we can go back into the actual photo mode. So that is essentially taking a picture during the during the day. Uh, it's got lots of other, other features. There's a feature button up here where you can um, point to a maybe a, a bird and it, it, it's supposed to identify and, and track that object for you. Um, I haven't really used that feature too much to be honest, uh, but it is there. What else? Well, that, that's basically, those are the main ways that you use uh, the scope during the daytime. Uh, during the nighttime, what's the difference? Well, say the focusing, you do that the same. One of the things in the <laughs> tutorial videos, this Astro Dark option, if you've got some instructions here, basically what you do is you shut the telescope, or in its case, in a dark place, and you click uh, shoot and it goes away for about 10 minutes or so and it sets a, it creates a series of dark frames. So these are exposures where it's trying to work out um, the amount of whether there's noise coming from the, uh, the sensors behind the cameras and it takes a whole series of frames, different exposures, different gain settings and it really sets you up for reducing the noise of any photos you might take during nighttime use. So people who are familiar with Astro will we understand the term dark frame, but essentially if you're not, this is just like a noise reduction function. You do it once um, or every so often, but you put this, it, the, the unit will remember these dark frames that you've done and you can just run them, as I say, anytime by putting the unit away somewhere dark. And it tells you when it's when it's finished successfully and you get to 100% is it will slide a bar here. Um, and then after that, you go into the actual astro mode itself and we'll see 
later on how, um, how we actually use that uh, outside. So that's basically how the app works. It is, as I say, having tried to use it without reading any instructions, I found it quite fiddly, but yeah, now I've used it for a few weeks, then you know it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's a little bit glitchy, I'd say sometimes you lose connection with the cam, with the telescope. Sometimes some of the options like that little joystick disappear and you have to cycle it on and off to get it back. So it's not without bugs, but basically um, when you're familiar with it, it's, it's a pretty easy interface to use uh, to control your dwarf too. So I've summarized the steps you need to follow. To take a picture during the day, you connect your phone to the smart telescope, point towards the target, focus it, and then shoot the images. It's very much like using any normal camera, except that in this case, the camera is inside the smart telescope that's sitting on the ground. After that, you can use the app to download the images from the telescope to your phone or a PC. More complicated at night, again, you connect your phone. You then have to do some dark frames, although you can do those in advance point to a bright star or a planet, focus carefully, then do a thing called calibration. This is basically where the smart telescope spins around, works out where it is in the world, also known as plate solving. And if that is successful, you can select an astro target, the telescope will go to it, and then you shoot and stack the images. The telescope will automatically stack these images, providing a progressively better and better image. And afterwards, you can download those images as before to either your phone or to your laptop and maybe do a bit of processing if you want to afterwards. So I always recommend you try out any new piece of kit during the day first. And in this case, I've taken a few daytime recordings looking into the garden and I think that the results are very good. So this is video taken straight from the Dwarf 2 downloaded it using the, the, the USB connection and I'm really very happy with the result. It's captured the the birds and the squirrel very well and very easy to use and the focus has worked really well. Moving on to solar system objects, I started with the moon which is around first quarter um, when I was taking these images. So you can see the two cameras, the, the wide angle and the telephoto. And then I took a little bit of video from the telephoto lens. Uh, the focus was a little bit tricky. Used the autofocus again, it got quite close and then did a, a finer adjustment using the, um, the manual focus uh, adjustment that we saw before. And then just to get an idea of the comparison of the image scales, here's the uh, telephoto on one side and the wide angle on the other. So next I had a look at the sun. Firstly I installed the two neutral density filters that come with the deluxe package and then we looked towards quite a low sun. Now even though there was there's quite a bit of cloud passing by, weather hasn't been too good for me recently, it's still quite easy to get a nice image of the solar disk. And if you bring the exposure down quite a long way, you can start to see some basic features. So we picked up a couple of sunspots. Uh, wasn't really much else going on, but very easy to take some quick images of the sun. As for the rest of the solar system, it's been limited really to having a look at uh, Jupiter, where you can see the Galilean moons, but the image scale, I'd say, of of the telephoto or the dwarf two in general isn't really suited to seeing any detail on the planets other than maybe the major moons. So finally got to deep sky. Uh, the first night I tried to use the dwarf two was very windy, so predictably the results weren't that great. Um, having done an initial plate solve and uh, go to to the target, I selected Messier thirty one and uh, got it to stack a few images. Now, pretty pleased that we have got anything really. The, the night was really very windy, but you can see also in this picture of the uh, Seven Sisters, we got quite a lot of uh, trailing as the tripod was moved around in the wind. On a better night, repeating the, uh, the target on the Messier 31, got a much nicer image here. So this is uh, 50 10 second shots with a gain of 80. Um, straight out the back of the camera and then this is what I got 
simply adjusting the contrast and uh, cropping out some of the rotated uh, edges of the field. So I think that's not a bad result for a very quick uh, set of uh, exposures. Moving on to uh, the Orion Nebula, it was uh, just rising when I took these images, only a, a minute or so of exposure with the four, first quarter moon, but still I think with a little bit of adjustment of the contrast, you can see that you can capture a nice uh, image of Messier 42 very easily. These are all my initial images, clearly you need more time to get better detail. And then moving on to the Seven Sisters again, the stack gives a hint of the nebulosity that uh, you see around some of those stars. And then having adjusted the contrast, uh, we get a, a pretty decent uh, image of, of the cluster. Uh, finally, I had a look at a nebula target. So I pointed the dwarf two towards the North American nebula. Well, I guess it's not too bad. The North American nebula doesn't really fit into the field of view. And it's probably one of those cases where it would be nice to be able to rotate the orientation of the frame in the way that you would with maybe a digital SLR or an Astro camera in order to best fit the target into the field of view. But nonetheless, records some nebulosity, 85 10 second shots and definitely shows potential. So what are my conclusions on the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope? Well, I think the first thing to say is I need more time to get the best uh, deep sky objects from this telescope. I need to be able to get conditions that allow me to do hundreds of subframes rather than the tens of frames that I've used to produce the images in this video. So in terms of deep sky, this can definitely go further and produce better results than I've seen so far. And I look forward to, to trying out that, that functionality. Do I like the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope? I'd say yes. It is an ultra portable setup. I've found that it has very reliable plate solving to work out which direction it's pointing in the night sky and the target location is also accurate. One little uh, bugbear is that the size of the onboard target library is small, but that is not a blocking point really because you can always manually type in the RA and the deck of any object that you want to go to and take a picture of if it's not stored as one of the pre-stored uh, targets. The app is a little glitchy. Sometimes it uh, loses connection with the telescope and also it tends to forget the settings that you've typed in after you've used them for one exposure. But those are really little, really small issues really. And as I put in this video together, I noticed that there is a new version of the software that's dropped. So no doubt that will offer better features and start to tidy up some of those little bugs. Are the results from this telescope likely to match what you might get from a more traditional Astro setup. So a small APO refractor with an Astro camera or maybe a digital SLR with a telephoto lens. Well, I'd say possibly not, although I'd say I need to get some more deep sky images to be certain, but really not comparing the same thing. An Astro setup, when you take into account the cost of the mount, is gonna cost you a lot more than this telescope. So if you think that you might want to get into real grab and go, and this is a telescope that can get you an image really within less than five minutes uh, of going outside, if you're prepared, then I think that the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope is a good proposition. It probably complements other telescopes if you've already got them, or if you're just looking to get some astro images to show to your friends and you're not necessarily wanting to buy a whole load of other astro kit, then this is a quite a good way of doing that. So I hope it's been useful. I'll try to post a follow-up video when I've got some better quality deep sky images to really show the potential of this uh, telescope. But for now, uh, I think, yeah, it's good value and it is worth looking at just as something different, high-tech imaging, uh, yeah, worth a go. Okay, thanks for watching.